everyone. Good to be back in Newcastle with the memorable uh, River Tyne. Yesterday, as I was listening at, at the opening uh, reception, some, I can't remember who, uh, one of the organizers mentioned the fact that we were living in a time of emergency, which is very true because all over the world, uh, people are, you know, leaving their homes desperately, seeking, you know, other homes in other countries. So you have refugees all over the place and, and wars as ever. So I'd like to begin with a poem I wrote. Uh, it's in my collection called uh, The Insomnia Poems, poems about night and the images that come to you when you're just lying in bed, uh, you know, the thoughts that come. You might have listened to the news or whatever, and you can't get it out of your head. So this poem is called A Brief Odyssey, and I wrote it after the image of the little Syrian boy, a two-year-old boy, was shown on TV. His body was washed up on the, on the Mediterranean shore, and he looked as if he was sleeping. Uh, and uh, his name was Alan Quir Kurdi, Alan Kurdi, and he and his family were trying to escape the war in Syria. And I wrote this poem. But what was, what was particularly moving was the fact that uh, they showed on the news a home movie of him jumping around with his brother and looking so happy. And uh, yeah, anyway, I wrote this poem. The Toddler whose body was laughter, happy even after they had to flee the gray rubble of what was once home. A live wire, all jumps and chants, he repeated the words of his father, Europe, Europe, boat trip, boat trip, new home, new home. Dressed as if for an outing, a great adventure. He, his brother, and anxious parents, all headed for the Aegean, Homer's mythic sea. But the night, it was dark, and the sea, it was on calm, and the boat, an overcrowded dinghy, set sail like a gamble against an hourglass. Ill wind, ill-fated journey, leaving only a father, to tell the day's tale of how they all slipped his clinging fingers turned to sand. The live wire, all jumps and chants, returned by the abiding waves of the sea, a small and casual sacrifice on the shore of Poseidon's omnivorous heart. Migration is one of the experiences of the Caribbean. And uh, this poem goes back to the time when I was about 15, 16, and went to see some friends off at the airport because there was a constant flow of people leaving the Caribbean, not, not, not only Guyana, but Barbados, Trinidad, people going to come into England or going to the USA or Canada. And with migration, the people who are leaving at times don't realize the impact that they're leaving, you know, has on the people uh, left behind. And so this poem is about that. It's called Old Cane Cut at Airport. So there was an elderly East Indian cane cutter man well, I don't know if he was a cane cutter, but I've made him a cane cutter. And he was seeing his grandson off. His 10-year-old grandson was going to join his mother because we were talking. And the poem is about that. Old cane cutter at airport. Boy, going to join his mother in Canada. Study bad, turn lawyer. Girl, taking the flower of herself elsewhere. 
turn nurse, maybe doctor. Whole families sucked abroad. Through the glass of the departure lounge, old cane cutter watches it all, face a study of diasporic brooding, watches the silver shark waiting on the tarmac, watches until the shuddering monster takes off with his one and only grandson, leaving behind a gaping hole in the glittering sea we call sky. But now, outside the airport building, where emotions are no longer checked in, the old man surrenders to his gut instinct, sinking to his knees on the grass. His cane-shot eyes, his voice cracked as he wails, what his bones know for certain. Never to meet again, never to meet again. Come, Hanuman, only your many arms can help console this man, still waving to an empty sky, the white flag of his handkerchief. And because those two are sad poems, in a way, I'll just read uh, a couple from a sequence called uh, Lazy Thoughts of a Lazy Woman in my selected uh, book. And at the time I wrote this poem, I was pregnant uh, with my younger daughter and felt that I had a right to put my feet up uh, you know, without doing anything much and leave everything to everyone else. Uh, no housework. So uh, it's a reflection on that, lazy thoughts of a lazy woman. So here she's observing dust. Dust, dust has a right to settle. Milk, the right to curdle. Cheese, the right to turn green. Scum and fungi are rich words. This one is called Grease. Grease steals in like a lover over the body of my oven. Grease kisses the knobs of my stove. Grease plays with the small hands of my spoons. Grease caresses the skin of my tablecloth, laying claim to every crease. Grease reassures me that life is naturally sticky. Greece is obviously having an affair with me. And this little one is called With Apologies to Hamlet. To pee or not to pee, that is the question. Whether it's sensible in the mind to suffer for sake of verse, the discomforting slings of a full and pressing bladder, or to break poetic thought for Lou as a course of matter, and by a P sing end it. Uh, I'll just read about two or three from this book, uh, which is my latest book. Passport here and there. It was published in 2020 during lockdown, published by Blood Axe. And I must say, Neil, uh, Neil has been doing such a wonderful uh, job as editor for the last over 25 years, widening the depth and breadth of not only you know British poetry but world poetry. So, thanks, Neil. This poem is called, I, I think I'm, I'd like some water. How do you open this? Mm. 
This poem was uh, commissioned by the Royal Society of Literature uh, to mark the 100th anniversary of the British uh, war poet, Wilfred Owen. It was to mark, I think, his 100th anniversary since his death. And what we had to do, they asked us to choose one of his poems and respond to it. So this is my response. I ch the poem I chose was, Dulce et decorum est, which means sweet and honorable it is to die for one's country. And uh, like, I think that was an ironic title because the death of the young soldier was so horrifyingly painful. But this, this poem, Battle, is from the perspective of a woman, uh, her perspective on war. Now on the seabed of childbirth, she gripped the iron railings, silently calling on her mother and all the gods to help her. Wave after wave of shining pain breaking upon her. Her body, an exhausted ship, working its way past the long hall of the siren's music. Oh, why can't the blood-gifted child spring from a rib or burst like a tenor from her father's forehead? In her delirious distress, as each contraction flares her back and gasps her breath, she thinks she sees death in the killing fields of the, and beyond the water lights. In the end, anchoring deep in the inner trenches of herself, just wanting it over and done with, she pushed death back into the cupboard and pushed life into the world. Now years on, a grieving mother, she reflects, was it for this that I endured what I endured? To see the life I reared fed to the jaws of some unwanted war, another bloody Troy primed with promises of sweet rewards. Oh, generations of lost sons, my eyes, the only flowers for an unknown grave. I don't know how much time I have. So I'll, I'll end with this one called Atlantic. The Atlantic Ocean in Guyana, uh, runs all along the coast. Uh, the Guyana coastline is very flat and most of the people, most of the population live along the coast. And so you have this mighty Atlantic and ocean and Guyana is about six feet below sea level. So there's a constant threat of, you know, flooding. And, uh, but there's the gray sea wall, which was built by the Dutch running all along the, uh, the, the coast to keep back the waters. But both seawall and ocean are really uh, two beloved features for all Guyanese. Uh, as children, it's where we go uh, to play cricket, where we go to fly kites at Easter, where lovers go, where people just go to sit out and enjoy the fresh air, you know, because you have benches along, you can sit. And so uh, it's, it's, it's lovely, but at the same time, Atlantic is such a, you know, powerful ocean. And so it inspired this poem, Atlantic. Married as we were to your brown on tourist beaches, as children, we thought that you, Atlantic, belonged to us, your below sea level offspring. See us playing cricket, turn down bucket making wicket, 
Ball, a spin-off of Empire, lost in the applauding waves for six. At Easter, to mark the ascent of Christ, see us raising a carnival of butterflying kites. Yet, we know that playfulness is not your nature, that ships sink in you like matchsticks, the small boys daring to dive from the jetty's edge sometimes never surface from your majestic magnetic depths. So from the seawall's Dutch built safety, we watch your changing moods, your glimmers, and your gloom. Atlantic, now sleeping in the distance, peaceful as a dog glossed by the morning sun. Atlantic, now, now churning up an army of wild horses, white manes threatening a biblical leaping, or brooding on the ships that bruise your memory, the nameless bones on the seashells of our history. Still, at dusk, we love to sit in the evening's calm, hearing the wash of your voice over rocks and sand, watching the small emergence of a blue back crab. Me thinking that is you, Atlantic, who give birth in the nascent dark to the coming on stars. Thank you.